Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are delighted to be here with MCPHS and Prep Skills. And this is a webinar all about those students who want to pursue a future in pre-med, in optometry, in pharmacy. And we have some incredible guests that are going to help answer your questions today and give you some information that'll help you in finding your future. And hosting this webinar with MCPHS is Prep Skills. And I'm going to just do a introduction of Joanna. My name is Charmaine Hammond and I'm delighted to work with uh, Prep Skills on their webinar series. And Joanna has been in the education system for, oh gosh, more than 25 years and uh, opened up prep skills as a solution, an end-to-end -to -end solution to help students and their families who were transitioning. And Joanna, I'm going to get you to tell us a little bit more about prep skills and then how, how you came to know MCPHS. Sure. It, essentially, we help families who are transitioning and considering American universities. And as Charmaine said, it's, it's important to understand the entire process because it is a holistic process. And I'm thrilled today to have MCPHS and Christina with us because we've known each other for, I'd say at least a decade. Uh, and they, in my opinion, are the experts in this area. And so this is an opportunity for families to get their questions answered directly by the experts. We get so many questions around the health sciences and pharmacy and direct med. And so I'm thrilled that Christina could be here today with a couple of her students to answer those questions. So thank you and welcome. Wonderful. All right. We're going to start off with a poll so we know a little bit more about the audience that's joined us today. And I'm going to put the poll up. Then we'll come back and introduce Christina formally. And then Christina will introduce our students. So we're going to put a poll up. And let me just relaunch that. All right. Here we go. You should be seeing a poll. If you can just take a moment and um, run through these questions. The first question is, which of these best describes you? This will help us know who is on the webinar today so that we can customize and tailor some of the responses to, to that. The second question is, what area of study are you most interested? In? And there's a few options there for you. All right. And the third is, what is your intended start date? So there's several different terms from fall 2020 to fall 2022. And then how likely were you to have considered a US university or college pre-COVID? All right, and question number five is how likely are you now to consider a US college or university. All right, and I'll just give you another moment there to see, answer your questions. Thank you so much for participating. This really helps us in understanding. We have lots of students on the call today, on the webinar today, and parents mm -hmm. as well. Awesome. All right. So I'm just going to give four more seconds and then we will close the polling. And if anyone was not able to answer the poll, if you're on your cell phone and, and couldn't get that going on your phone, not to worry. We've actually got the poll in another format and we'll send that out to you when we send the follow-up email. All right. So I'm going to end the polling. All right. There we go. All right, let me introduce Christina. It is a pleasure to introduce Christina, and I actually got to meet Christina Cormier in person in Vancouver a few months ago. Christina is the Associate Director of Admission, uh, Remote Admission Office with MCPHS University, and her passion is all about assisting students as they establish their footprints in their academic journey. And before working for MCPHS, Christina worked as a high school teacher and she completed a master's degree in education administration while working in many departments, including orientation, residence life and alumni relations. Now she chose to come to work 
at MCPHS because of the location and the commitment to career and global education. Christina's favorite part of the job is really traveling all over North America to connect with the alumni from MCPHS, as well as students who are interested in building opportunities in healthcare. Boston is a great city, she says, with endless opportunities in the Longwood medical area. Christina, welcome and thank you so much. And I will pass it over to you now. Thank you and thank you Prep Skills so much for helping us organize this great event. We're really excited to have uh, so many of you with us today from all over Canada. And so we want to really highlight some of the unique things that MCPHS does to support Canadian students. Mm -hmm. Uh, but before uh, I go there, I wanted to sort of outline what we'll be doing today. I'm going to introduce the other two panelists that will be helping me with the MCPHS presentation today. Talk a little bit about why uh, healthcare is a great career for you to go into, uh, as if the current global situation may not be uh, evident enough. Why MCPHS is a great place for you to prepare, particularly if you are coming uh, from Canada and want to return to Canada to practice health, health sciences, uh, how we help support students through the science curriculums and the healthcare curriculums onto a uh, really great career path, what your housing options are, what tuition is like, what visas are like, and what your next steps are going to be with us. So I wanted to also introduce David Babawi and J Jasmine, uh, two of my students. And as Charmaine mentioned earlier, I, I love traveling all over Canada to meet students. I met Jasmine uh, for the first time at Appleby College, uh, her family, and then at the Panera Bread in Mississauga, and David's parents at the Keg, uh, very exclusive Canadian institutions that you guys have up there. Uh, we really miss being in Canada, but we hope that we'll be returning soon uh, this fall. So David and Jasmine both came to us as transfer students, and they're going to share a little bit about those experiences later on. So uh, one third of all new jobs by 2026 will be in the healthcare industry, and the statistic is pre-global uh, pandemic. So we can only anticipate that this is going to grow. Healthcare is the largest employer in the United States and offers, the United States has over 3,000 colleges and universities. So there are lots of different pathways for you to become a healthcare provider in the U.S., MCPHS is unfortunately not a hockey school, uh, no Division I athletics here, but lots of direct entry pathways and over 108 careers in healthcare. Uh, we rank number one in New England and number four in the country, and I'm sure you can think of some pretty competitive neighbors of ours in Boston. Uh, however, our students are earning the most out of any of the New England states and fourth in the country with an average salary of $116,000. One of the things that you can do when you're comparing a US university is to use the college scorecard. This is Department of Education data that the US releases so that you can compare and contrast graduation rates, retention rates, and what your outcomes are going to be from your university. I think now more than ever with the cost of higher education, particularly in the US, it's important to understand what the value and outcome will be for your career after you complete a degree at university. MCPHS ranks ahead of a lot of other universities in this regard, and so we encourage you to use that college scorecard. So Christina, why, oh, yes. Did you want to, should we put up poll number two for people? That would be great. Thanks. Awesome. For okay, here it comes, everyone. Poll number two, just give me a second here to get this on the screen for you. We've got a few more questions for you, and this will help with the next part of content that Christina is going through. So on a scale of one to five, and five is super important, and one is not important at all, how important is it for you to be able to study at a college or a university that exclusively offers healthcare programs? So there's just one on this one. We'll give you another few seconds. All right. Here 
we go. Looks like all the answers are in. There we go. Thank you for your feedback on that. All right, Christina, I'm passing it back over to you. Great. Thanks so much, Charmaine. So MCPHS is a healthcare specific university. It started as just a pharmacy school, but again has grown uh, over 100 programs as of recent. We're the second oldest college of pharmacy, but we graduate more pharmacists uh, than any other school in the United States. And we have over 13 different entry terms to pharmacy. Uh, several of those paths were areas that Jasmine and David both explored when they were looking at MCPHS. So there are a lot of students who begin anew or able to transfer their bachelor's of pharmacy or master's of pharmacy into degree completion with MCPHS. We have gone above and beyond and are very dedicated. Our most recent president uh, who retired in, in January was a pharmacist and was very dedicated to making sure that us as counselors were really well educated and making sure that all international students found the stepping stones that they needed to practice pharmacy in the United States and at home. MCPHS is also a teaching university, so none of our classes are taught by teaching assistants or graduate students. All of our courses are taught by terminal professors that have the highest degree in their field. They're either pharmacists or PhD professors that are really there with the desire to teach. It's what they love, and I think our students uh, are going to talk a bit about that as well. So 91% of them have that terminal degree. Some new things that have come up for us, uh, our student to faculty ratio has lowered to 16 to one. We've launched a healthcare uh, business program. We also have announced an Advantage Scholarship and I'll get to that in a minute, as well as the School of Continuing and Professional Studies. This is an online program that many students are utilizing to complete prerequisites online at home from Canada. Uh, before this platform and this school officially launched, MCPHS has about 10 years of uh, teaching online. So uh, we were very fortunate in March when everyone had to start learning online because we had this sort of backbone and structure already. And a year prior to that, we had actually launched our official School of Continuing Studies online. So MCPHS also has three distinct uh, on the ground locations. Our most famous is in Boston, Massachusetts in the Longwood Medical Area. This is where the initial building is and where all first year students come. So if you're listening and you're in grade 12, your only choice when you're coming will be to apply to our Boston campus. If you are looking to transfer or you're looking at graduate school programs, there is an option for you to potentially go to our Boston, Worcester, or Manchester campus and the way to explore that possibility is to email me your transcript and we will sort of talk about which, which campus makes the most sense for you. And we also have a very active online community and actually many of our Canadian students and graduates have been active on this platform and I'll talk about why in just a little bit. So this is where MCPHS is located here. You can see inside the circle, uh, we've expanded and our roof sort of encompasses a couple other buildings. Merck Pharmaceuticals, you may have heard of them, particularly if you live near Mississauga. They have a big headquarters there as well, right David? I can see you smiling. Uh, you may have heard of our famous neighbors over here, Harvard and MIT. Uh, one of my students actually from Scarborough uh, is now working in this area, Lester. He, um, graduated from MCPHS with a degree in molecular biology and started working in the labs at MIT and Boston University and has gone on for a career in biomedical engineering. So we have a lot of students who use the network of the location here. As you can see, uh, lots of Harvard teaching hospitals. One of our other students from St. Mary's in Scarborough, she actually works here at the Diabetes Research Center um, and she'll be going off to medical school next fall, so fall 2021. This has given our students a tremendous platform and springboard to make sure that they're getting the graduate school opportunities that they're seeking. So we saw a lot of questions about medical school. Um, Charmaine, would you mind putting up the poll though before we get into medical and uh, veterinarian about dentistry? You bet. All right. 
we are going to put up poll number three. Here we go. We are launching another poll that you should see on your screen. This one is querying if there's interest from those of you that are on the webinar or listening to us later. Um, are you interested in a career in dentistry? Just give everybody a, mem a moment. Everybody's so fast with the poll. This is great. Fingers on the button. All right, I'll give another 10 seconds or so. All right, and I'm going to close this polling. All right. Thank All right. You. Thank you. So we have done some exploratory work. MCPHS has an agreement with a medical school. So some of you may already be familiar with St. George's University in Grenada. They are one of the top uh, medical schools at matching for residency in the United States in the 50 states. They also have quite a record of matching in Canada. They matched over 30 students in 2019, all over uh, the GTA, on the West Coast, and they have a large number of international students. As you may know, it's very difficult to get into medical school in Canada. It is even more difficult in some ways in the United States and particularly in the US for international students to gain acceptance to medical schools. So while Harvard Medical is across the street, uh, the challenges of, of acceptance are, are certainly present, although the opportunities for growing your resume and being successful in medical school are certainly outlined carefully at MCPHS. So what this shows here on the graph are the number of students who are successful at the USMLE and being able to go on uh, and practice medicine. At SGU, many of their Canadian graduates, when you go onto their website, you can filter where they do their residency. And we see a lot of students in Detroit and Buffalo, uh, which makes sense if you think about commuting home into Canada and being able to stay close geographically. We have about 40 spaces for international students who will gain acceptance to MCPHS in a three plus four fashion that you can see outlined down here. These students will finish three years of prerequisite work at MCPHS University. In grade 12, they'll get one acceptance letter that says, congratulations, Jasmine, you've been accepted uh, to MCPHS pre-medical health studies. And you'll also have a second application that you'll fill out. One will be due November 1st and the second March 20th that will solidify a space at St. George's for you. So there'll be 40 students that are international students in a cohort that come in into the first year of university with us, spend three years with us, and then go matriculate on to St. George's University. This is a very popular pathway for Canadian students. It gives them the option in the third year if they choose to take an MCAT if they'd like and apply to Canadian and US med schools. However, they also keep the door open if they are unsuccessful with MCAT preparation to continue on to St. George's with no MCAT required. So the pathway has a distinct benefit of helping you grow those first three years, shoot your shot as we say, and uh, you know, have the access and opportunity to explore a variety of ways of getting to medical school in the end. Another program that we see a lot of Canadians enroll to is our optometry program. If I ask any of our optometry students from Canada why they choose MCPHS, one is it's our distance from Canada. So uh, to any Montrealers on the, on the call here, we are just a five hour drive from the Worcester campus, our optical centers uh, to Montreal, and only about 10 hours to Toronto or a quick hour flight and then a half hour train. So really easy and convenient for Canadians on the East. Uh, but I'll be honest, we actually have quite a few Canadians from the West that uh, really like this campus and really find that the experience in Worcester is really close knit and uh, sort of a boutique optometry opportunity for them. We also offer patient care in the first year, which is barely atypical of optometry. And we also offer a seven year direct entry optometry program. So if you're listening and you're in grade 12 right now, or even younger, and you're thinking, what is optometry? How could I get involved in that career? 
uh, reach out to us. We'd be happy to show, sort of show you how you could save a year of your education. Most students will go to school for four years of a bachelor's degree and then four more years of optometry. So this direct entry pathway is a way for our students to go to school straight through seven years and be able to finish that. But we also have a number of students who will do our four year graduate program after completing a bachelor's at home in Canada. Our newest uh, launch uh, recently has been our Advantage Scholarship. So any student who graduates with a bachelor's or master's degree at MCPHS can return for a 100% tuition scholarship. So they only pay technology fees and are able to complete one of these six master's degrees. This is particularly attractive to our Canadian students as many of them are either going to take over a family pharmacy in Canada or perhaps work in an independent pharmacy or work in or owning an optical center. Um, they have maybe haven't learned bookkeeping skills or marketing skills. And those are things that you can learn in our healthcare MBA. So this is not a general MBA, it is very specific to healthcare business and how business and insurance processing might work in the US, which is also really important for our students. We also have students who wanna go into hospital pharmacy who will do the clinical research master's degree. Also, any of our Canadians who want to stay in Boston after graduation can take a 50% scholarship and actually stay in Boston and do this program as well on the ground face to face. So there's a variety of different ways to use the Advantage Scholarship to your advantage. Okay. So uh, again, uh, there are a lot of reasons that Canadians come. And again, I think when you look at education and planning for the future more than ever, it's important to look at these outcomes. So with St. George's, they match students into Canada's residencies, which is tremendous and a very difficult thing to do, even if you're graduating from Canadian medical schools. In pharmacy, uh, we have a number of students who are successful at taking their national test in Canada, as well as their provincial. And with exciting news in optometry, Ontario and British Columbia are now actually accepting the same exam that's accepted here in the US. So those two provinces would only need to take one test and they would be able to practice in BC, Ontario and all 50 states and then have to take their provincial exams as well, just because laws in both pharmacy and optometry can vary a little bit state to state or province to province. All right, since I have some pharmacy students with us, I thought it was best, especially for my Bostonian PharmD student to share uh, a little bit about himself and, and our PharmD program. So I'm gonna let David unmute and, uh, and, and share some info with us. Okay. Hi, everybody. It's very nice to meet you all. Uh, so I'm a first year pharmacy student at uh, the MCPHS Boston campus. So there's a couple of things I want to co cover with you guys today. Uh, the first thing is the new curriculum that we're going to be covering for 2020. For 2020. Uh, MCPHS is um, changing their curriculum from a sort of separate structured program to a more integrated uh, coursework. So what you could expect is like to be able to take like we're going to be doing um, our, our program in modules instead of uh, separate courses. Modules will be able to put like important like if you're studying like one body system, you would study everything that relates to pharmacy for that body system all at once in the same time. And something like that is really helpful, especially for like when you're trying to learn it. Something else I'd like to cover is um, the difference uh, or what, what your pharmacy degree gets you in the end. Uh, some things that I think people tend to skip over when they're um, deciding between unis is sort of what you get in the end of your degree. And it's very important to think about what your job is going to be after. So I think the different career options for achieving a far e over like an MM or a bachelor's differs greatly, especially in what you, what you want to work after. Uh, for hospital pharmacy, I'm certain that in Canada, you have to have a PharmD if you would like to work in the hospital. And that's uh, a big reason why I chose to switch to MCPHS because I'd like to work in the hospital and a PharmD is the only thing that you could get you there. And from, from what I know, uh, pharmacies, a lot of community pharmacies as well, since there's pharmacies becoming a more competitive program, uh, are requiring uh, like students to have a PharmD as well. 
another big uh like option why Boston is a good choice is um because they have really close uh, ties to the U.S. and Canada. So doing your equivalency exams on the way back uh, is a lot easier than uh, like if you were, like I studied in England before and it would be a lot more difficult to do your equivalency exams coming from England. Um, another uh, thing that's really important is uh, MCPHS has a lot of ties to the pharmacy industry. So if uh, like finding a job after is gonna be a, a really easy, really easy process. Um, so the way the pharmacy uh, program works, there is a salary pharmacy program. There is a two plus three option. So that would be uh, two years that you do in, in the Boston main campus. And then you could apply to the Worcester campus and you would do another three years in, in that campus. But it's, uh, it's like back-to-back -back studying from what I understand and it's uh, studying during the summer as well. Um, yeah. Tell me if I, if I missed anything. <laughs> no, that's great, David. Thank you so much. I know yesterday we, you had sort of shared uh, something you wrote. Do you want to read that now? I would like to actually, I have a little paragraph that I put together. So a really big factor that I didn't take into consideration before making a decision uh, was where my pharmacy degree would take me. I was focused too much on the one decision at a time process and, and trying to pick out like which university, like I wasn't looking at the end goal of what I had and taking into consideration what my university would be giving me in return for all my hard work. Uh, it wasn't until about my second year when I was studying in the UK that I realized that I was like doing a pharmacy degree that would not really put me anywhere. Like it wouldn't get me to where I wanted to be in order to have like a successful and secure future. Uh, in, in, in Canada, pharmacy is a very competitive field. Uh, the thing that I realized is that if I did want to have a chance at hospital pharmacy in Canada, the only way would be with a PharmD degree because that would put me very far ahead of the rest of the competition. Um, when taking a step back and taking in as much advice from parents and close family friends, it was clear that I needed to make a big change in my uh, educational pathway and in order to secure my future. And after a lot of searching, I found that MCPHS would be able to give me a degree that is of a high standing and will be able to make it possible to work in a hospital pharmacy field. And at the same time, MCPHS has plenty of connections to the field and it makes it even easier to find a good job after so that you can feel that your future is more secured. Um, the sight of a, like, a, like a quicker program might be a little more tempting, but um, it's, it's really what you, what you get at the end that's really important. Great, thank you so much for sharing that with us, David. Uh, MCP just also has an honors program in the second year that can feed into a research fellowship for the summer. So we have students who want to get published. This will make you really competitive in the residency process. Students don't have to go on for specializations in hospital pharmacy, but if they want to, uh, we have some uh, areas in the undergraduate program that will really strengthen your ability to apply for these programs. Our SURF program is one of those. I would definitely encourage you to Google that if you're interested in applying to medical school or applying for residencies in either optometry or pharmacy. And then secondly is our honors program. Again, this will help our students sort of rise to the top of uh, the number of pharmacy students that we have and help solidify, again, uh, making yourself competitive in both the job market as well as these residency options post-graduation. So these are some of our uh, post-grad opportunities and fellowships. We have students that go on, as David mentioned, into hospital residencies, research positions, uh, go on to a variety of different independent practices, community practices, retail practices, industrial positions, regulatory affairs, drug and med safety. It's really a, an endless opportunity in pharmacy. And I think one of the things that students are nervous of when they first begin is sort of putting themselves in a corner and this is the only thing I'm gonna do for my whole life without realizing that even with just in pharmacy, you can be a veterinarian pharmacist, you can be an oncology pharmacist, you can own Rexel. There are a thousand job opportunities available to you. You wanna add anything to that, David? Yeah, so that like my mind in the beginning when I was picking up overseas, I was really closed and narrowed down to like you know, a pharmacist's only role would be the community pharmacist. But in reality, like you said, there are a lot of other options that you could go to. And I think like there's a lot of like, like once you start to enter into MCP, 
they'll start to like, um, like it'll be a lot clearer what you want to do, uh, especially since there's so many opportunities around. Like you said, Merrick is, is right around the corner from FCP. That's a huge industrial like pharmaceutical giant. And like those are, it really opens your eyes to that. Yeah. And David, how did you find the transition from a UK PharmD or I'm sorry, a UK master's pharmacy program into the PharmD program here at MCPHS? Uh, it was pretty smooth. Um, I think the biggest uh, difference that I noticed was uh, in teaching styles. Um, in the UK, they, it was, um, it was more like, um, it wasn't as interactive and as an, like an interactive learning style as you do get at MCP. MCP really does like they have, they really give it your, their all when they're trying to teach you. Like they, um, the profs are so easy to access. They have, they have offers hours, like you can pretty much like it's one hour a week, but you can pretty much contact them whenever and they'll be, they'll be willing to meet with you about your questions. It's really something special. Yeah. Thanks David. And I know the answer to this question, but I want to share this with our listeners. Uh, how much transfer credit did you bring with you from the UK? None. <laughs> yeah. So how, how did you grapple with that decision? Uh, it was, it was a little like shaky at first, but um, like, like I said in the beginning, like once I saw like what I was getting at the end and I had my eyes focused more on my end goal than like, you know, just trying to get out of university, I, I realized that this is like a better option. And even being an MCP, I realized like I made a really good choice. Yeah. We think you made a really good choice too. We're really happy you're with us. And to any transfer students that might be listening, we know that it can be difficult to give up the hard work, uh, but UK schools will start the PharmD curriculums in the first year, and that does not correlate to the intro classes that are required in a more liberal arts comprehensive PharmD program. And so for that reason, those credits do not transfer. Um, and Jasmine can even share with us a little bit later about how even some classes from Canada don't transfer either. And um, we, we wanted to sort of give you these cautionary tales. Uh, these two students have worked tremendously hard and they were actually both January starts in the PharmD program. And that's another thing I'd really like to highlight to all of you who maybe are a bit discouraged or know someone who's discouraged starting online classes uh, at home. Uh, MCPHS is, is going into a hybrid format. We'll talk a little bit about that later, but our PharmD program will be committed to doing everything we can to assure quality education both this September and for any students who want to begin in January as both Jasmine and David did. Um, David also mentioned our accelerated PharmD program. So we have a number of students with bachelor's degrees who have met all of the prerequisites. This is a pretty difficult uh, thing to do from abroad. Traditionally, we see uh, with Canadian science courses that students are taking three credits that includes a lab, where in the United States, it is three credits of lecture plus one lab. So we see a lot of students short on science credits when they're applying to this program. So if we have a lot of lead time like we do right now because it's June and the semester doesn't start until August. So right now we have a lot of students completing one credit of organic chemistry or one credit of microbiology over the summer through our online continuing school of professional studies in preparation for this program. But again, this is a three month, ex I'm sorry, a three year accelerated doctorate degree. And the only way to make sure that you're qualified for these programs is to email your transcript to myself and Janice, and we will be able to determine uh, which of the PharmD pathways is the best option for you. And we talked about beginning in the Boston campus or the Worcester campus, but as I mentioned earlier, there are over 13 entry terms. David and Jasmine came in in January. We have students who start in summer, who start in fall, who start in the first, second, third year, the Worcester program, a hybrid program. I could go on all day about entry terms to PharmD, but I'll, I'll spare you. Okay, so Jasmine, I wanted to pass it over to you to talk a little bit about Boston, our faculty, and your experiences that you had before uh, the pandemic pulled you away. I know as you regretted having to leave, but we're excited to have you back in September. Thank you, Christina. I'm really excited to come back in September too. Um, I was only there for two months, but it was the best and most exhilarating 
experience. So I'll share more about living in Boston in a bit, but just on the faculty, I have such amazing relationships with all the professors that I've had classes with. And considering I was only there for two months, that's really amazing. And I think it really helps because while we do have like large lecture halls with a lot of students, your professors really take like the time out to, you know, get to know each individual student. They really focus on allowing a lot of office hours, always very accessible via email and everything. So you have a lot of opportunity to see them. And even when you're like walking around on campus, you run into them quite a bit too. And it's just great to have that kind of accessibility. Um, our small lab sizes are lots of fun too, because you get really um, focused you get really focused labs with your instructors and with the TAs there. Um, I think my favorite thing about our professors is that they actually are all in your programs. So it's really fun because, you know, you're learning about calculus, but your professor is a doctor. And so he's telling you about calculus and he's like, I know you're going to tell me that how am I going to use this in the hospital or whatever, but then he gives you real life examples of him using it in the hospital. So I think that really keeps your motivation up and all that too. So I really enjoy that about our faculty members, even our dean, he's a pharmacist as well, like the dean of pharmacy. And so getting to talk to him and hearing his experiences, it gets you excited. And as David had mentioned, there's so many different opportunities for pharmacy, pharmacy students that it gives you a lot more exposure to it because growing up, like I knew there were community pharmacies, but I didn't realize how much of a role pharmacists played in different situations, which was nice to see. But um, yeah, so that's all about faculty. I guess I can move on to support. Um, so support, I did go to a Canadian university. I completed my entire bachelor's, so I actually have quite a bit of experience in the university world. And one thing I really liked about MCP is on your orientation day, they give you an overwhelmingly um, large list of all the support that they they actually offer, which is great because when I had attended my first university, I wasn't aware of all the opportunities and they were unmatched. So we actually have a faculty member and an academic coach and everyone has their own. So these academic coaches, they really help make sure that you're taking the right classes and they make sure you're staying on track and um, if you need help getting into certain classes to keep your track together, they're really good at making those things happen. Your faculty mentors are, again, in your career choice. So it's really nice to get to sit down with them and see all that stuff as well. Um, another great thing, so my faculty, we actually have a pharmacy in the Boston campus, and it's actually like a running pharmacy. And so my faculty mentor is actually, um, she's in charge of that. She's always there and all that and so when I first met her she told me to come in on Fridays because they have like pharmacy like uh, third year pharmacy students in there and working so to get that opportunity to just be in there and just visualize it with your faculty mentor telling you about it it's a really great experience another thing I want to touch on is not only do you have like writing centers and all that tutor help in like on campus they actually have a 24 7 um our tutor me program so you actually have access to help whenever so if you're like studying late at night and you're struggling you can actually go on to our mcp website there's a little tool that you can enter and you can actually get that help right then and there and it's really nice because it's something that mcp provides to you to make sure that you're successful so it's nice to have that extra support as well you really can't get off track here at mcp which is nice I think it's important to mention that those resources are available online. So when we transitioned to online, students were already familiar with those resources, how to access them, how to access their professors. So even through a global pandemic that may have sort of knocked a lot of folks off kilter, we had students who stayed the course and literally stayed the course and, and were able to successfully finish those courses uh, as Jasmine and David have mentioned. So you wanna talk a little bit about Boston? Yes. Boston's beautiful. <laughs> um, I have lived in Calgary. I've lived in Vancouver. I currently live in Brampton, Ontario, so close to Toronto. Um, and Boston is just, 
it's beautiful, it's different, it's got such like a fun, vibrant energy to it. Um, we all know about all the sports in Boston, you know, it's a big sports city, but living on like at MCP and living on residence, you still get a lot of exposure to the medical experience and like that kind of environment. Like me and my um, roommate, we would always walk from a residence building to school and we would stop up by Starbucks on our way there. And you would actually run into like medical professionals who are sitting there and talking about like how many doses of this medicine they gave to this patient or talking about why they prefer this drug over that one. And it's just, there, there'd be times where my friend and I, friends and I, we would slow down to listen to the conversations of people walking on the street just because they'd be talking about medicine. And so I think that's an amazing, um, a great part about the location of the Boston University is that you're surrounded by all these universities, you're surrounded by all these hospitals, and it, it just like keeps like the energy going, it keep, gets you excited for the future too. And as um, Dave and Christina were mentioning earlier, Boston, um, MCP does have a lot of ties with those communities as well. So you're not just like, you're not just getting that access that way, but you, you visually see it as well. Um, and other things, so there's a lot of clinical options in that area, and we actually have a, we have a career advisor center, and the career advisors actually send us emails, and these emails come like maybe once a month, sometimes, actually they've been a lot more cons like consistent, They're, they've been like once a week, and they tell you about like internships in the area, they tell you about pharmacy positions in the area, and it's all directed to what you're studying. So I know I'm talking a lot about pharmacy, but for other programs as well, they send it, send you the opportunities for that as well. So as much as you can like go out and search on your own, you don't really need to because they send the information to you. So it's nice that way too. They also send you stuff about scholarships and everything. So you're you on top of your course loan as much like you don't have to go out to look because they gave you all that information. Um, and yeah, and it's really nice to see that pharmacy on campus, especially like when you're walking up to the library to study, you just like kind of look over and you see all these like farm students with like their white coats and it's, it's a cool experience. And being there in January, a lot of our students had their white coat ceremonies and stuff. And to see all of them like all in their coats and dressed up, like all the different programs, it's just, it's really exciting to know that you're surrounded by people who want to like go in the same field and going, we're, we're all healthcare professionals and you feel like that from the get-go. It's not one of those things that, you know, you start off in university, you're all trying to figure it out and like do your bachelor's and this and that. It's more so that you go in as a pre-pharmacy student, you're treated as a professional from the start and it's nice to be in that environment. Jasmine, could you talk a little bit about that transition? I know you once made the transition out of province to undergraduate and now out of country to another beginning of undergraduate program. And we have a lot of Canadian students who get to this point of the summer. And the reality is that in about 60 days, they're going to leave their hometowns and their friends and their family, and they're going to move sight unseen to Boston, and they've never been here before, and they have feelings of nervousness, and they panic, and they think, should I find a roommate? How is this all going to work out for me? And as a student who's done this a couple times, uh, what advice do you have, and what do you have to say to those students? Well, um, when I found out that I was moving across the country, like actually not across country, across the border, I thought it would be a lot more difficult than moving from one province to another, but it was really seamless. And I found like, I found out that I was moving to Boston and I picked up and moved everything in about six days. I knew for about a month that I was moving. I had a few trips planned before that. So I had exactly six days to pack my stuff and move. Um, but it was very seamless. I didn't have to, um, there wasn't, okay, let me retry this. So the one thing is, is that I know it's really scary leaving your family, leaving your friends and all that, but once you like get up and go and you just allow yourself to like be exposed to everyone and we have our orientations and all that and you have um, students in your classes and everything, you get so wrapped up in just 
the excitement of it that you don't feel it at first. Later on, you will, but luckily we live in a time where we can FaceTime our family and we can talk to them through that. And it's, I know it seems scary, but it's really not. And I think it's an experience that everyone should take advantage of. Um, I am the oldest of about 20 cousins. And all my younger cousins always tell me that they don't want to leave home because it's nice to get your laundry done. It's nice to like hang out with your family on the weekends. But once you move off and like come to campus, you're still getting your laundry done. You're kind of doing it on your own, but it's you and your friends in it together trying to figure out how to use the laundry machine. And as far as like hanging out on the weekends, it's you get to hang out with professionals in your program who are going through what you're going through. And so you're not in it alone. And the school actually also has um, counseling service and they have this massage chair down there. So even if you just want to go sit in that chair, like you can just walk down the steps, sit in that chair, They'll come over, they'll play some games with you, they'll talk to you, and it's just, it's not that bad. And the great thing is, is you can spend your weekend, like you can spend your breaks and you can come home and visit. And I don't know if the parents are listening, but students, when you leave and you come home and visit on the weekends, your parents give you so much more love and like, they're just so excited to have you at home that like the laundry they're going to do for you once in a while, they'll do everything for you. So kind of a win-win. <laughs> <Thank you, Jasmine. laughs> it sounds like community online and offline is really, really important to MCPHS. And I'm hearing that the students really appreciate that as well. Christina, we have another slide. Are you ready for me to pop that up? Yes, thank you. Awesome. And by the way, David and Jasmine, it's great hearing from both of you because you're going through this right now. So thank you so much for what you're sharing. This is great. All right, we are going to launch poll number four. Here we go. Poll number four, launching the poll. How important, there's um, a couple of questions. How important is it for you to begin your um, university college future at an in-person or a hybrid, which is what Christina talked about, where there's some online and there's in-person on campus. So there's a couple of choices, not important, it's important or very important. And there's also an opportunity for, uh, to book a call with Christina, to be able to talk to some students, to get some of your specific questions answered. And we'll actually put a link for that uh, in the follow-up email. And I'll put a link for that call booking in the chat box so you can see. So I'll just give another few uh, seconds for this poll number four. I just want to mention too, I know with David, the first person I heard from, I know I don't want to out him, but the first person I heard from was his mom. Uh, so if there are parents listening who are hesitating to reach out, know that we're happy to chat with you first and uh, we're happy to chat with your student later on. And uh, that was how it worked out with David. Actually. Jasmine's aunt found our school at a high school college fair and said, you know, I have a, I have a cousin who's looking for graduate school pharmacy. And so Jasmine uh, sort of found us through that network as well. So if there are even folks in your life that you think are looking at careers in pharmacy, optometry, and medicine, you can feel free to share our information with them. And we're happy to have these exploratory conversations because you never know, in six months, they might be sitting on a student panel with MCPHS talking about their journey to Boston. Awesome, thank you. And I'll just end the poll now. Thank you very much for responding, everybody. Okay. Okay, great. I didn't wanna leave out our Worcester campus. So we also have housing and our Accelerated Farm D program, as well as our physical therapy program on our Worcester campus. Um, this talks a little bit more about the housing styles available to our students here. I also don't want to skip over tuition. It is always a common question. So uh, this is definitely the best place, this link up here of tuition and fees. Fees change depending upon program and campus. So I tried to outline the most popular programs in Canada on the slide, uh, ranging as you see here from about 34,000 uh, to 40,000. I would say on average students from Canada uh, use a combination of personal loan, OSAP funding, and scholarships that are both granted 
uh, either by their high schools, province, and communities, as well as their merit scholarships that they attain through the application process to MCPHS. Our scholarship range starts at 2000 and goes up to 16000 and that's an award that MCPHS initially offers. Uh, we have had a separate scholarship fund uh, that we've done on a case-by-case -case basis through financial appeals for families impacted by COVID-19. So if you are finding yourself hesitating to apply, maybe income has changed in the household due to COVID-19, again, this is a great reason to schedule a call, reach out to us and we can have a more in-depth conversation. And Charmaine, I think we have another poll here, yes? We do, we do. Let me put up poll number five, thank you. All right, poll number five. We're going to launch this poll now and appreciate your input. This one has to do with as, as families are budgeting for their post-secondary education in the United States, what kind of budget are you looking at? And you'll see that this is in Canadian dollars. So there's just some ranges that you can pick around what is it that you're looking to budget for education in the United States? And we'll just give a moment for people to get their responses in. And I'll just give another five or 10 seconds here, another 10 seconds. Thank you guys so much for answering all of our poll questions. This will actually help MCPHS sort of guide its, uh, its strategies in the future for assisting Canadian families. And that's really my priority here. Uh, currently, we have about 50 students coming in for fall 2020. So uh, we're working really closely with everyone currently on not just funding, but transfer credits and all the other moving parts of getting our students from Canada into classes in September. So thank you so much for uh, spending your time answering our poll questions and helping me help all of you in the future uh, with some of this information. Awesome, I will close this poll now. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. So as I had mentioned, our Boston campus scholarship range is here. Our Worcester scholarship range is here. We also offer some housing scholarship and housing support as well. And then also provincial support. So we have students who are experts. Uh, Jasmine has used OSAP funding. I know I've connected her with several incoming students for the fall. I have a number of students who use Alberta student aid in optometry and in pharmacy on our Worcester campus. So if you're looking to apply for some of these provincial programs, uh, we have students here who can help you. I also partner with Education USA. They are tremendous. Jenica is a wonderful contact for all Canadian students looking to study in the United States. So even if uh, MCPHS may not be your destination, Education USA is a great resource here to help you apply for U.S. Uh, universities, as well as U.S. Um, using your provincial funds in the United States. If you have any questions about this, uh, always contact me. I'm happy uh, to help you. Again, even if this is not your first choice destination, uh, we want to get the information out there. We think it's really important. Uh, the United States is a great place to study health sciences, and we want to help as many Canadians uh, achieve that here, particularly because, as Jasmine and David both know, the applications in, in the Canada universities are very competitive. So having a space in Canadian med school, Canadian optometry school, there are only two Canadian optometry schools. Um, and if you don't speak French, one of them is particularly difficult. Um, and so we want to be able to open those doors for Canadians into the U.S. And so we hope that we'll see you not just in our applications, but also applying. So this talks a little bit about the student visa. I always have a lot of questions about this. Um, students who have a Canadian passport and are Canadian residents are on F1 status, but do not interview for a visa or have to go through any tremendously uh, rigorous processes. Those students are gonna come directly um, through on an I-20. They state that they're studying as students. We have a really straightforward application packet. Uh, you send in your proof of funds and your passport, and it really is that simple. So I have a lot of families in Canada. I always feel like I have the best uh, region because Canada is a melting pot for 
people all over the world. And so I see a lot of students from all over the world um, just having Canada as my territory, which I think makes me pretty lucky. Um, and on top of it, I have one of the easiest immigration processes because of our, our uh, you know, friendliness with Canada. Again, uh, Jasmine and David came in uh, with one with a bachelor's degree, one with almost two years of uni under the belt and started anew at MCPHS. There are some students who are able to do transfer credits um, and sometimes that happens. Our continuing school of professional studies does offer a 50% discount for students who take our online classes over the summer. So we're doing everything that we can to really assure that you're getting the right credits and the right foundation to get your doctorate of pharmacy or other degrees. When you apply, you'll see a list here uh, when you submit an application that it's been completed and then a list of all of these other pieces. So as you see here, we have students who apply uh, from University of Toronto, Mississauga, um, students who might do an outstanding prerequisite at the University of New England, and we'll help make sure that all of your credits are in line and that you can come into our future semesters. So if you are looking to apply for January intake, that application is currently open here. If you are looking to apply for fall 2021, uh, we will accept either the Common App or our regular application and we'll probably, I know Joanna has done uh, some presentations on Common App, so reach out to Prep Skills if you'd like more information on Common App. And if you are still looking at fall 2020, we've seen a number of students who uh, maybe were looking at MCPHS or perhaps not, but have recently been notified that their current Canadian uni of choice or even a school here in the states um, is only going to be offering classes online and that is not parallel to what they want to do uh, depending upon the program it is possible that there is space at mcphs for you this fall um, we cannot guarantee that and i'm happy to look over your particular academic situation and assess that with you and determine which academic start term could be possible for you at MCPHS. Uh, again, my email is on this slide. I think I, I think I got it on almost every slide, um, but check your email. Uh, we are in Canada often. I am a remote employee for MCPHS and I'm often asked uh, where my apartment is in Toronto. Uh, it's, it's, I don't have one. I spend a lot of time visiting families like Jasmine and David's and I feel a little bit at home every time I have family dinner with them at, at the keg or, or somewhere else in Canada. So thank you guys all for uh, reaching out to us and uh, making my transition back to the United States. Uh, sort of, I've been here now for five months straight, which is a really bizarre feeling that to be in the US for this long. Um, I miss Canada and miss coming up to see all of you and we'll definitely be there a lot uh, this upcoming fall, we hope. So we are so okay. excited to take your questions. Great, thank you, Christina. That was tremendous. Jasmine, David, thank you for your insights. And let's unpack this a bit, a bit of a rapid fire Q&A. We have a question around, first I wanna to touch on, so, so many of the students at the high school level are wondering you know, what the pathway is in terms of directly entering for undergrad at MCPHS. So that's one question. Um, the other is around health sciences in particular. How do they go through that pathway? And I'll give you a third, IB versus AP high school program. Uh, what do you recommend for uh, better application opportunities to MCPHS or health sciences in general? Sure, so students who are in grade 11 now, so perhaps rising grade 12 students, I think uh, the United States application process is a bit different than the Canadian uni process. So I know when you apply to Canadian schools, they look for six courses, they're looking for certain benchmarks in that regard. Many US schools, myself included, are we all do things a bit different, but I can speak to MCPHS. We look at marks from grades nine, 10, and 11, and we'll put together a comprehensive GPA grade point average, looking for around an 86 average um, throughout your cumulative coursework, your math coursework, and your science coursework. So we look at three years of science, three years of math, and then six humanities for a cumulative. 
We'll also look at a test score. So for our Ontario students, all, all international students have to submit proof of their language proficiency as of this year. And in Ontario, that would be the OSSLT score. You can also choose to take the SAT, but it is not required. You have to maintain, you have to achieve a minimum of a 480 on the verbal to prove language proficiency there. If a student takes the SAT and they did well on the math, I would say anything over a 600. That can also, I say getting into uni at MCP is like running a race. There are things you do to be steps ahead and a high math score on the SAT, good marks in math and science. So if you're in grade eight or grade nine listening to me, I, when you apply to US universities, grade nine is the first one third of your college application. Grade 10 is two thirds. Grade 11 is, is the whole thing. And really in grade 12, when you're applying to the states, you're sort of putting that ribbon and sending that package off to us to assess what your future is going to be like. And for MCPHS, we really want to make sure that you have the skills and the foundation and you're ready for this continual doctoral program. One year of strong marks in grade 12 is, is not sufficient. It's going to take that continual um, proof that you've put the time successful into some of these direct entry programs and continue on at university. Um, okay. When it comes to health science tracks, there's a lot of different ways that you can explore this. We have a lot of exploratory um, areas on our website for you to be able to look into different curriculums. I always encourage students to interview anyone they know. Uh, it's difficult sometimes. I think students think I want to be a surgeon, for example. I'll just job shadow a surgeon. Well, that's really difficult to do in the US. It's also difficult to do at home in Canada. But perhaps you have a family friend who works as a school nurse or who works as a pharmacist. Interview as many healthcare professors as you can. Maybe come up with a list of five questions. What was your best day on the job? What was your worst day on the job? Uh, how did you pick this field? How do you think the field will change? How did you get your education? These are great ways and they might lead you into careers in health science that you've never thought about before, like forensic nursing or hospital pharmacy. And the great thing about the MCPHS curriculum is that the first two years are going to give you the strategies and coursework that can springboard you on to a variety of careers. So our students in the first two years of PharmD, the first two years of pre-med, the first two years of optometry, pre-optometry, they're all taking organic chemistry, microbiology, chemistry one, chemistry two, calculus. These are the coursework and the foundations that can get you into a variety of graduate programs. And because of the strategic uh, faculty mentors who you're gonna meet with your first semester, you're going to have the knowledge to say, wait a second, I'm a physical ther pre-physical therapy and I, I don't want to work in this capacity. I actually really want to do fine movements with the hands. Well, that's an occupational therapist. And they might be able to guide you in those first two years into a different career without having to lose any time and be able to accelerate into the graduate school that you are destined for. And then lastly, Joanna, uh, when it comes to IB and AP, I would say majority of our Canadian students have a background in one of these two curricula. It takes uh, usually a pretty uh, strong science student to be successful at MCPHS. And so we encourage you to follow the advice of your school counselors. Uh, one of the big mistakes I see students do is they take all the AP classes or they overload and they take, it's actually very uncommon for a US student to take chemistry and biology at the same time. So when they get to uni and the States, uh, they take biology and chemistry at the first time and they're really, uh, they're really cautious. I know in Canada, that's actually very popular for you to do those two courses at the same time in grade 12. So in fact, our first year students like David and Jasmine, they coast right through the first year, 4.0 GPAs. I know they both have them because I checked their marks. Um, and they do great um, because of that. So is it applicable to take IB and AP? Yes, if your school counselors support that and if you are ready for these courses. We really wanna see the highest level of chemistry in pharmacy. It's very important to us for those of you in grade 11 and grade 12. Um, 
and the highest math. Uh, we will accept transfer credits outside of the sciences. So if you are in IB, uh, five, six, and sevens uh, can transfer to the US or to MCPHS, well, to MCPHS specifically. And for AP exams, fours and fives have been transferring historically. Wonderful. And Christina, uh, one student is concerned that they're perhaps, although they, they seem to uh, have done really well and they're in their high 90s with their grades, um, currently in grade 11, they said that in grade 9 or 10, it was a little lower. Maybe it was yeah. low 90s. <laughs> Who knows? But is, is, can you talk about the holistic approach? Is that... Is, is yeah, that, okay. definitely. So a lot of schools in the U.S., um, including the MCPHS application, gives you the opportunity to submit a letter of recommendation, to write a personal statement of 500 words, going back to those interviews or any job shadow experience a student has. These are really great ways for you to say not just what you know what you want to do, but maybe, in fact, what you don't want to do. Knowing that you don't want to be a pharmacist and that's why you're going to medical school or knowing that you don't want to be a physician and that's why you want to go to pharmacy school can be really helpful to put that into a personal statement. So we're going to look at a variety of things. How did you do in math? How did you do in science? How, what, do your, what do your teachers have to say about you? How do you measure up against your peers? A lot of your school counselors may write a letter to us that indicate that everyone that has this chemistry teacher has a really tough time, he doesn't give out any A's, uh, and you had to work really hard, and you went into school early every day, and you really, really worked hard for that mark. So even though it's a low 90, uh, it might have been the highest mark in the class. Um, so we look to the letter of recommendation sometimes to provide some context if a student has a course or a semester or a year where they've struggled. We've seen everything. Life happens and we know that uh, sometimes you, you hear this all the time, life is how you react to it. So if you've had a concussion, if you've had to take a leave of absence from school, there are all types of adversities that you'll face throughout your education and they'll happen when you're at university too. So it's important for us to see how do you respond to that? What type of network do you have? What kind of friends do you have? What kind of activities do you rely on to keep your schedule? These are all ways that we know that you'll be successful in your university experience as well. And we'll look for those indicators in your application. Wonderful. And some concrete questions about taking physics. Is that advised? Depends on program. Yeah, it does depend on program. Um, I would encourage you to go to mcphs.edu slash academics and you can see if physics is required in your program or not. Um, and I would make your decision from there. If you've had no, there are students, physics is not popular in US high schools necessarily. We have lots of students in the States who graduate without physics and are eligible and come to MCPHS. We only require one full year of biology and one full year of chemistry. Um, the Ontario School Diplomas uh, have this in them uh, sort of integrated regardless. So uh, all of our Ontario students are typically prepared for MCPHS because of their high school curriculums. Mm -hmm. um, one final question and then we'll definitely answer these as we move forward. But it, could you maybe compare uh, Canadian healthcare university options to MCPHS or maybe touch upon just some distinguishing factor as to why perhaps students choose MCPHS over some of the Canadian programs. Yeah, I mean, I have two Canadians here who chose a US university instead of the Canadian option. So I'll, I'm gonna let them defer. Uh, I'll, I'll hit on any main themes they don't cover, but could we pass that question to Jasmine and David? Sure. Jasmine or David? Um, so for me personally, I chose an American university because um, like your, your options are unlimited when it comes to applications anyways with Canadian universities. You do have, there's, there's um, a bigger set of universities in the states for you to apply to. It's still competitive, but the thing is, is you do have those more opportunities. One of my favorite things about MCP is that it really doesn't limit my options because I can come back and practice in Canada if I wanted to. And so because you have that opportunity, why not go explore a different 
a different city, a different country and all that. And the thing is, is that here you get exposure to and like a different um, kind of like, how do I explain this? So it's, it's just a different exposure compared to what you get at Canadian universities. I have a lot of friends who attend um, schools in Canada and the States. And I think for me, the biggest different, like differing factor is I find that I do have a lot more support here at MCP than they do at their schools. And so I really, really appreciate that. And if it's not limiting your opportunity, like your chance to practice in Canada, why would you, why would you limit yourself that way? Yeah, thank you. Know, you. David? Uh, another thing that I think is a, a big reason why you would prefer to go internationally is because I know schools in Canada are very competitive, but um, when you when you're at MCP, something that's really reassuring is that once you're doing your your undergraduate uh, program, um, a really good thing to know is that your your pharmacy spot after is is like secured, so you don't have to worry about like like doing your undergraduate and then applying to pharmacy school and then waiting on the decision. Then you've already got your decision from before, so that's something that's a really big a really big like positive. Wonderful. Charmaine. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I'm just going to add a, a couple more. I would say the smaller environment. So MCPHS Boston campus is about 5,000 students. We know that seems a little microscopic compared to some of the big research schools in Canada. So uh, the sizing is a huge reason that students come to MCPHS. Uh, our programs can be accelerated. So if you look at the uh, annual salary of a pharmacist as $100,000 and it takes you eight years or it takes you seven years in a Canadian system. Uh, that's a loss of one to $200,000 that you're not practicing. Um, and so for that reason, we see a number of students at MCPHS. We have clinical rotations in Canada, in the GTA, in Calgary. Um, and so we have a lot of students who are successful going home to their provinces to work. Uh, as a part of their program, so they're not leaving that piece. Um, and lastly, I would say that the finances overall, uh, we have students who have no scholarship sometimes to study in Canadian systems or limited scholarships. Um, and they may see it uh, compared to a health sciences program there to MCPHS, they may be paying about 30,000 Canadian dollars either way uh, and pick the one that has, as David mentioned, this very clear stepping stone of your first day at university to your first day as a pharmacist, optometrist, physician, and you know exactly what steps you have to take to get there, which is pretty unique uh, and not common at many Canadian schools. Wonderful. I think uh, sure. something that Christina mentioned that was really important is the, the class sizes. That is for me, I'm used to, from the UK, the, I'm used to very big class sizes. And I think that in my, like, learning, like, the learning environment of a smaller classroom provides so much more, like, interaction. And you just feel like you're learning so much more. Wonderful. Wonderful. Charmaine. It's that time again. Look I know. Time oh, my. I know. I'm all, Joanna's heard me say this before. I'm always sad when a webinar comes to an end because I love the information we're getting. Um, and there's just been such rich conversation. I'm just going to ask our guests today and Joanna as well for you if there's a final tip that you want to leave everybody with. And then I'm going to. Uh, Pull the pull the uh, webinar to a close. So, David or Jasmine, uh, what's a final tip for a student that's watching this now or later, or for a parent or a guidance counselor? What's a one word or two word tip you can give people? I think for me, so something that I think <laughs> is really important. Okay, <laughs> something that I think that is really important to take into consideration is to really focus on your not like your university choice is obviously important but to focus on your career path what mm. what is going to give you the like the most like what university is going to secure you the the best job and that's what i found mcphs does for me so that yeah. big picture thank you david big picture, yeah. thank you jasmine what about you um for me i would say just don't limit yourself take the steps ask the questions i bugged christina a lot and so charmaine has <laughs> Um, put the link there. Don't hesitate to reach out and get all the information you need and 
like David said, like this, the great part about this is you can see the end right at the beginning. Great. Christina, what about you? That's been still my answer. I, I want to just say communicate with us, communicate with myself, communicate with Janice, communicate with Carolyn by transfer and I 20 folks, communicate with our students. Uh, watch MCPHS TV on YouTube, really see if this is the place for you. Um, and if it's not, I'll, I'll, then you just know more, right? That we always want you to know as much as you can and get all the information you can. And that's what my role is as the Canadian Enrollment Advisor. So I hope to chat with all of you soon. And thank you so much to Joanna and Charmaine for organizing this and gathering us all here today. I'm really grateful uh, even just to see my students virtually. Uh, we miss you here and we can't wait to see you in <laughs> September. Oh, fantastic. Wow. Joanna. Wonderful. And, and so success is really a group project. And I think today you learned that Christina is so tremendously resourceful. So you need to reach out to Christina. Thank you, Charmaine, for putting up the, um, the, the link to reach out and book a call with Christina. So go ahead and do that. Thank you to David and Jasmine for your practical insight and always a pleasure being here with you, Charmaine. So thank you. You as well. So we look forward to connecting with you all. You will get an email with the resources that to the links that Christina has mentioned and some of the answers from the questions. We really appreciate all the questions that came in today uh, through the chat and Q&A. And I know there will be more questions. So please reach out. And absolutely, we will get contact information. There's a question, can we get contact information for Christina? You betcha. We will put that all in the follow-up email uh, so that you have that right away. And again, congratulations to you all being here and considering your future. And I'm just going to close with a quote from Joanna Severino, actually, today from Prep Skills. Joanna is really passionate about helping students find their future. And this is what we've done today is provide some information to help you find your future and the right path for you. All the best. Thank you so much, Thank everyone. You. Thank you. Thank you.